Hi everybody, this is Julian from Hugging Face. In this video, I'm going to show you how to accelerate your transformer training jobs with Optimum Graph Core, an open source library by Hugging Face that leverages the AI processors from Graph Core. So we're going to start from a vanilla piece of transformer training code, and I'm going to show you how to adapt it to run with Optimum Graph Core. And we will then run this code on a graph core box that's hosted in the cloud on paper space. I'll show you how to set things up and uh, we'll run the notebook and see how things go. Okay, let's get started. If you're curious about the graph core accelerators, of course, you should absolutely go to that website, uh, graphcore.ai, where you will learn everything there is to know about those chips. They're called IPUs. And, uh, and they come in different configurations, of course. Uh, you, can, uh, you can buy them as you know, actual servers and host them in your data center. Uh, the one we're going to use is, uh, is the pod 16 configuration, but of course I don't have one of those boxes on my desk. That'd be great, but not possible. Uh, but fortunately, we can also use some um, cloud-based IPUs. So as you can see here, there are a number of uh, providers that you can use. Um, none of the uh, well-known uh, providers like you know AWS or Azure or or Google, but you know maybe that's going to come later. Uh, and one really interesting option is to actually use paper space, uh, and this gives us access to uh, to an IPU server for up to six hours. Uh, using a notebook interface, which is super, super simple. And of course, the environment is completely set up for us. So uh, we don't have to go and install SDKs, etc. Right. So that's what we're going to do. Using paper space is very simple. Just go to that website, uh, sign up for free, of course, and then log in. OK, let's just do this. And then we're presented with uh, the opportunity to create a project, which is what we want to do. Uh, yeah, let's use that name. Why not? But the next step is to create a notebook and we are going to select, of course, this environment, which is already set up with everything we need and the graph core SDK, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and this gives us access to, um, a pod 16 for up to six hours. So that's pretty nice. And we also have some uh, Hoggy Face examples too. So let's just go, and it's the only choice anyway, so you can't go wrong here. Um, so let's just go and launch this. After a minute or so, our environment is ready. Um, so we can see we have a pod 16 machine with uh, four IPU processors. It will automatically shut down in six hours. Um, you know, if, uh, <laughs> if we need that much, now, uh, of course, we can stop the machine when we're done. And right there, we see the environment that we have. So um, uh, the, the graph core SDK, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, so automatically in this environment, we have um, some sample notebooks. You can take a quick look at those. Uh, there's a, a quick intro. Um, and of course, I encourage you to go and, and read all of those. Uh, so there's one on BERT. Uh, there's a, a text classification example. Looks like we have a speech to text example as well here. Uh, wave 2, VEC 2, fine tuning. All right, so different examples. But, you know, those those examples are great. And of course, they're going to run fine. But I think it's uh, it's a little more interesting of, to show you how to adapt existing code. Um, and as it turns out, as I was doing this, I did find a couple of pitfalls. So uh, <laughs> and that's, you know, that bugged me for a little while until, you know, I got help. So thanks again, Optimum team. Um, but I think it's valuable that I uh, show you what those problems are and uh, and how to uh, you know how to fix them instead of uh, wasting time like I did. So let me upload um, a couple of notebooks here. 
there we go uh, we have those two notebooks okay great and now let's look at those so the first one is uh the the vanilla maybe let me zoom in a little bit here yeah is a vanilla notebook where i um i fine-tune a model on an amazon review data set or i should say a subset of the amazon review uh, if you watch the optimum habana video that i uh, published uh, a couple of days ago this is the same and this is actually part of a bigger workshop and of course i'll put all the links for everything in the video description but long story short um i'm i'm i've prepared a subset of the amazon review data set and i'm fine-tuning a distilbert model to um, um to predict the star rating uh for a product review for from one to five right so it's a multi-class classification problem starting from product reviews so this is the like i said this is the vanilla notebook this is what you would have uh you know written probably um and let's take a very quick look you know there's nothing complicated here i actually changed this to roberta but you could you could try uh distill bird bird roberta you know doesn't matter uh the code is completely generic so we're fine tuning for one epoch we have five labels one to five stars some uh training parameters i'm loading the data set from the hugging face hub i have a training set and a validation set 90k for training 10k reviews for validation i have a metrics function to display accuracy f1 precision and a recall uh, for each epoch and then i just grab my model and my tokenizer right i apply the tokenizer to both data sets and then i define all my training arguments number of epochs hyperparameters etc etc then I define my trainer object, the model, the training arguments, the tokenizer, the metrics function, the two data sets. And then I just call train, right? Uh, so again, vanilla code. And here I, I just call train to show you that the code works uh, because obviously here training on CPU would take forever. So I interrupted it. Um, but this is really my starting point. So, so now that we have this example, uh, what do we need to do to accelerate it uh, with optimum graph core okay and i'll show you every single line you'll need to change and we'll discuss uh, this uh, small pitfall that i stumbled uh, into so um here we go first let's take a look at optimum graph core on uh, on github right so that's i guess the starting point uh, we have a blog post with some details here. Um, the blog post actually shows you how to do the, the same setup uh, on uh, an actual uh, graph core server. So if you have a, a pod 16 on your desk or in your data center, uh, you can probably uh, uh, run through those steps. Okay. Um, and we have some information on how to adapt training code from vanilla transformers to um, uh, ipu transformers so to speak okay uh, very importantly we also have the list of uh, models that are supported okay so bard bert etc uh, and and which tasks they're supported uh, for um, another important thing to look at of course as we will see is the graph core organization on the hugging face hub because this is where you're going to find the configuration files for the IPU, okay? Uh, and we'll see how where that uh, where that comes into play. Uh, now let's take a look at this updated notebook, and we'll make sure to highlight every single uh, change that I've made to the um, to the original notebook. So, well, the first obvious one, of course, is we need to install Optimum Graph Core, just like that. Uh, and then we need to uh, import three objects, uh, IPU config, which is the, the object that we'll use to fetch the graph core configuration for the particular model we're using. And we'll fetch that from the uh, Hugging Face Hub, of course. IPU trainer uh, and IPU training arguments, which will replace 
the vanilla objects uh, trainer and training arguments from the transformer libraries. And, uh, and they, they will have a couple of extra parameters, but nothing, nothing complicated. Okay, um, next uh, is the same. Uh, we're going to use BERT base uncased. Same number of epochs, same labels, same parameters. Okay, and here's a big change, right? Here's a big change. And maybe let me close that and zoom in a little bit. So, and that's the first uh, pitfall I, uh, I encountered when adapting the code. And fair enough, you know, it's probably my fault. I didn't pay enough attention to the doc. But, you know, again, I think it's worth calling out. So this um, problem relates to batch size, right? And as we know, whatever platform we use, if we have uh, a batch size, a training batch size that's too large, the training job is going to blow up and, and run out of memory. And this is exactly what happened to me here. So the problem I, uh, I had was the, uh, the iPod uh, 16 has uh, four IPUs and the default parameter stored in the model config file uh, will replicate the model on those four uh, IPUs. And so in, implicitly, this will multiply the batch size by four, okay? So uh, the batch size that I originally had in my, in my notebook uh, was okay for, I guess, you know, GPU training, but that um, multiplication factor uh, just blew things up, okay? So the calculation you need to be aware of is this, right? So the actual batch size that will run on the machine is your initial batch size, okay? Uh, the value for gradient accumulation steps and gradient accumulation means that uh, we'll just add up gradient updates uh, locally on the, on the machine before uh, applying updates. So it's a, it's a technique that lets us basically pretend we have a larger batch size. And this is a, this is a setting you can use in transformers. It's not graph core specific. So you multiply the batch size by this and then the replication factor. Okay. So this means um, if your batch size is say, um, you know, 128 and you have uh, gradient accumulation steps of 128 and replication factor of four, you know, you end up having a really, really big uh, batch size that might not fit on your chip, okay? So in my case, uh, you know, I'm using an iPod 16 server, and, and so the replication factor for this is four. We'll see it in the config file. And so the actual batch size will be whatever I said here, and you can see I, uh, uh, I, I uh, reduced it to two, okay? Uh, I used a gradient accumulation steps value of 128, and I have a replication factor of four. So it means the real batch size will be uh, 1K, right? So obviously, if you, uh, you know, if you start from a much larger batch size, if you start from 128 as the, uh, the train batch size, you can see, you know, things blow up pretty quickly, right? So be careful. Um, and I guess the default values, you know, caught me off guard as well. So uh, that's why here I'm explicitly, explicitly setting my batch size explicitly setting my uh, accumulation steps. And uh, of course I need to be aware of that uh, replication factor, okay? Um, so if you pay attention to this, uh, you'll be fine. Um, I have to say the error message that I got was, you know, uh, a little cryptic for me and, uh, you know, it didn't point me in the, in the right direction, but again, maybe it's just me, right? Um, you'll find more information in the graph core documentation. They have a, a really cool page on, on batching, uh, which you can see here. And they tell you everything about uh, replication factor, gradient accumulation, and some other uh, parameters that, uh, that are you know, running on that, uh, on that chip to increase the level of parallelism but also, you know, automatically increase batch size. And yeah, that could be, uh, that could be a problem sometimes. Okay. Uh, so, you no, know, nothing scary. Just be aware of those values. 
Uh, and if you see um, you know, a nasty C++ error message that is kind of memory related, this is probably what your problem is. So the second thing I had to fix um, was related to the fact that my, uh, the size of my training set was not a multiple of the batch size. So with a batch size of two, this might actually be unnecessary. But, you know, if you use different batch sizes and, of course, depending on how many samples you have, um, this could be a problem, too. So the thing is, you know, if the batch, if your uh, training set is not a, a, a multiple of the batch size, then the size of the last batch will be different, right? So, uh, you know, if your batch size is 100 and you have uh, 938 samples, you know, the last batch will be 38. And, uh, and that's, uh, that's not okay <laughs> with this particular model and PyTorch. Not sure who's, who the guilty uh, party is. Uh, and then, you know, training would fail saying, you know, well, the, the size of the tensor is not what I want. And, you know, again, yelling at me in evil ways. Uh, so again, with the batch size of two and a training set with 90K samples, I should be fine, but I would recommend that generally uh, you set this one to true so that the last batch, if the last batch happens to have a different size, you know, it gets ignored. It's dropped. It's not going to change much. And um, and you'll save yourself from, again, you know, weird PyTorch errors. Okay. All right. So these are really the two things that, uh, you know, caused me a little bit of trouble. Uh, just be aware of them and, and the rest should be super easy. Okay. Next, uh, we load the data set. This is no different. Okay. Um, we build the compute metrics function. We load the model. All the stuff here is identical. We tokenize the data. And here's a new, uh, here's a new cell. So this is where we grab the config file from the Hugging Face Hub. Okay. okay so, so I can print it out. Okay, what's next? So next, I'm replacing uh, the training arguments with the IPU training arguments, okay? Um, this line is updated in the sense that, you know, you have to worry about the batch size, you know, explain this previously, but that, that actual line is the same, but the value here is different. And I need, um, I need additional parameters. So the pod type, pod 16, and as explained earlier, I think it's safer to explicitly set uh, accumulation steps so that you know exactly which value you're using if you're not too sure what the defaults are. And just to be on the safe side, uh, maybe drop the last, uh, the last batch um, if your data set is not a multiple of your batch size, okay? Then uh, we kind of do the same for IPU trainer, which replaces, of course, the trainer object. And the only change here is we pass the IPU config. Okay. And we can see different layers being assigned to different IPUs. Okay. Um, then we enable the cache. Remember in the IPU config, we passed a directory name to cache the compiled models so that we don't have to, uh, we don't have to compile them again and again and again. Okay. And, uh, and graph core here on, on paper space actually provides some, uh, some pre-compiled models. So, you know, if you're lucky, your model will be in there and, uh, and you'll save yourself the trouble. And then we call train. Okay, and we see the first step is compiling the model. So this takes 400 seconds, which is about a little under seven minutes. But now, you know, it's saved and, uh, and we don't have to, for the next uh, runs, we don't have to do it again. And training starts, okay, and we see that total train batch size, right? So again, that's the 1024 value because we have two by four by 128, okay? So now it all makes sense, but on the first attempt, you know, could be could be weird, and so I will have in total eighty seven steps because I have ninety k ninety k samples. Training runs for a minute and fifty seven seconds, okay, and then we run evaluation again. So we have to recompile for this, 
and we won't next time. And let's see if evaluation completed. No, it's still running. So let's uh, let's pause for a minute. Let's wait for evaluation to complete, and I'll be back. Okay, so evaluation is complete. I see all the metrics coming out of my metrics function. Training is now done, and we can see that if we call you know train or evaluate on the same data set, uh, of course we get the same metrics. But this time we're not recompiling the model, right? Um, this time we're loading the compiled model from cache. So you want to make sure you enable this caching mechanism because it's saving you, you know, minutes um, every single time. Okay, and of course, last but not least, we can save the model and we saved it to model. And of course, we see the model here, right? And we could push it to the hub and um, and and save it. And in fact, oh, if yeah. we look at the GraphCore org, uh, we'll see we'll see some some actual models, not just config files. So, for example, here we see um, we see a model so that's a Diberta base model that has been fine tuned on Squad. Okay. Um, so there you go. Uh, this is a normal model. You could uh, you could push it to uh, you could push it to the hub and and use it just like another another model from the hub, right? No no difference at all. Okay, uh, well, that's pretty much what I wanted to show you today. Um, so quick recap, um, please take a look at, uh, at Optimum GraphCore and, um, and the examples that are in there. There are quite a few uh, examples here and, you know, ready-made scripts that you can use for fine tuning. Uh, there are some additional notebooks you you can look at um, and of course the the supported models that you know we update as often as we can uh, check out the the graph core page for additional details on on the actual chips and and where to use them uh, paper space is a really convenient way to do this as you saw and when it comes to modifications uh, very simple api changes that we highlighted here but also uh, a couple of gotchas maybe that now you're aware of so you'll save time hopefully hope this <laughs> will be useful for this at least okay well that's it for today uh i hope this was fun i hope you learned a few things uh so keep learning and of course keep rocking <laughs>